I have no words. Um, the Monday Night Football game that was scheduled for today has just ended. It. <sighs> It's not all Dak's fault, like I've already said. It is, it is everything around him. Everything around him. Andy Dalton could not do anything. Buda Baker went off in this game for the Cardinals. Sacked Andy Dalton a couple times. Got a forced fumble on Zeke, who fumbled twice, by the way. He's been having fumbling problems. Offensive line, injured. Defense, trash. It, it's been the same sort of thing for the Dallas Cowboys every week this season. And it's not changing anytime soon. Not changing at all. Just a horrid performance. And, you know, it, I was very much surprised, you know, at the fact that... At the fact that it's just, you know... How in the world did Dak do it? How in the world did Dak do it the first five weeks of the season? How'd he do it? I, I, I just don't know. Everything about this organization right now is just absolutely awful. Just awful. And the Cardinals could have ran four wide receivers on us all game if you if they really wanted to. I mean, I, Christian Kirk. Andy Isabella, DeAndre Hopkins, Larry Fitzgerald. That's all I got to do. Can you drink in the backfield? Kyle Murray, a quarterback who did no wrong in, in his comeback to Dallas anyway. Just an absolutely terrible performance by the Dallas Cowboys. But uh, the only thing that any Cowboys fan can be happy about is that we, you know, still have the division lead. That's basically the only thing that you can be happy about. It's the only thing I'm happy about. Division League is still ours. We can take control next week. But it's going to be hard. Well, actually, no. We can't take control, but I'll talk about that in the morning. What about the Chiefs to the Bills? The other game that was moved to Monday night. Well, not a good look for the Bills once again. They did not look great in the rain. I'll tell you one thing, Travis Kelsey caught two touchdown passes from Mahomes. One of them looked absolutely stunning. And then Clyde Edwards Hilaire was battering the Bills on the ground. And the Bills have had, you know, some defensive issues. They were starting to become apparent, but they became way more apparent, you know, during the Titans game. And they just got bulldozed for over 200 yards on the ground by the Chiefs' stable of running backs. And keep in mind, Chiefs are bringing in Le'Veon Bell. They are bringing him in this week, and it could be even more dangerous on the ground for the Chiefs. So, congrats to the Chiefs. They still are you know, looking pretty good right now. And, you know, one loss isn't going to keep them down for long. What about those 49ers? They bounce back. Very surprising that they bounce back like this. The Rams just could not get anything going on offense at all. And the 49ers did just enough. They did just enough. They went by only eight. But they did just enough. The game was just, it was really sloppy on both sides, I think. You know, I know there was a big catch by Kittle during, um, during one of the 49ers drives. Big T catch by Kittle. It was great to watch that one. Um, but the 49ers, they are back into things. They're back in the mix. It don't count them out yet just because they have injuries all over. I mean, you know, Jimmy G's back. Mostert, I'm not sure about Mostert because I think he got injured again. But, you know, things are looking good for the 49ers. You know who else is looking pretty good right about now? I'll tell you. It's those Buccaneers. Oh, boy. The Buccaneers. Just Aaron Rodgers got picked off for the first time this season. One of them being taken back to the house for a pick six. Crazy, right? And then the Buc Once that pick six happened, Buccaneers defense decided to put the clamps on Aaron Rodgers and company. 
he decided to put the clamps on him. And, you know, Brady, Brady and company got it easy after that. So, you know, Bucks win. Bucks are in the division lead right now in the NFC South. If we're being completely honest with ourselves, you know, the Panthers, which we'll talk about in a moment, um, you know, the Saints are right behind them. The NFC is once again looking like it's going to be a dogfight. I mean, we're only through six weeks of the regular season, and I can tell you there's so many teams that want to be, you know, the NFC's representative in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 55 this year, except for the NFC's. We just... Can we just cast the division away? This is this is one of those years where one division is just really, really bad and it just needs to be thrown away. Dolphins smothered the Jets. And by smothered, I mean they they got a shutout. They got a shutout. 24 nothing. Dolphins are three and three. Dolphins they may they may be looking pretty interesting down the road. They may be looking pretty interesting, I'm telling you. Um, it was the only other game at, at, at the 3 o'clock time slot. And, I mean, unfortunately, I didn't watch it. I was way more focused on the Bucks blowing up Green Bay. Way more focused on that. Um, so the game that got moved and the game, one of the games that was the cause of a bunch of moves around the NFL schedule... Um, did not end up the way the Patriots hoped. They lose to the Broncos, who, by the way, just kick field goals for everything. They kick six field goals. They didn't even need to do much. Cam Newton came back, but it didn't even matter if Cam Newton came back. I'm not sure if Stephon Gilmore came back during that game because I didn't watch the entirety of the game. I only watched like a very little at the very end. But it was crazy to see that the Broncos were just looking – looking like a good defense out there. I mean, it was crazy. So the Giants finally got their first win. You know, Ron Rivera decided to go for two, and that did work out for the football team. So the Giants, they have a victory. The NFC is just still <laughs> wide open. Um, Bears defense, I mean, what can you say about the Bears' defense that hasn't been said already? They just pretty much stuffed the Panthers. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater could do much. DJ Moore could do much. And it was a very interesting game, though. I'll tell you that much. I mean, you know, Nick Foles and company just did what they had to do to get the victory. And that's all they needed to do. And the Bears are 5-1. and Just play good defense and you will win games. That is the moral of the story out here. Speaking of defense, the number one defense um, was down to the Bengals, 21 to nothing, for a long, long time until they came back, won that game by only four points. Of course, Joe Burrow throws an interception at the very end of the game. Kind of sad. Um, what about the Jags? They looked pretty bad against the Lions. They got absolutely whooped by the Lions, which is crazy considering, you know, I mean, things were just not looking great, you know, out there in Jacksonville right now. Things were not looking great. Steelers, Browns. This game was supposed to be, this game was really hyped up. You know, one of the big games yesterday. And it didn't turn out to be a good game because Baker Mayfield, once he threw that pick, pick, pick six to make a Fitzpatrick, it was all downhill from there. And, I mean, the Steelers' defense was smothering, smothering the Browns. 38-7, to Steelers still undefeated. Steelers looking good going against another undefeated team. And we're talking about those Tennessee Titans. Boy, did the Titans kind of mess this up at first. I mean, they had a interesting lead. And then the Texans, led by Deshaun Watson with no line, no less, decided to come on back. And, you know, make things very, very interesting. And the reason why the Texans lost is not because of the overtime rule. It is because they did not take an extra point. When they should have taken an extra point. I, that's what I think. Y'all can, can 
why about it in the comments or something like that about it changing the NFL's overtime rules, which don't really need to be changed, if we're being completely honest with ourselves. Um, you don't do that. You don't let Derrick Henry run for 200 yards on you either. You don't let that happen at all. Especially a 94-yard run, which I ended up, which I ended up, I was very, very correct. Like once the Titans got the ball at the six-yard line, I was like, he's gonna break it off for a 94-yard touchdown run. And, and so, as soon as that happened, I was like, wow, wow, man, <laughs> crazy, crazy time, man. But, um, yeah, what about the rest of the NFCs? Well, there's really only one more team to talk about, and that's the Eagles. I mean, Ravens pretty much blew them out at first, but then, you know, they started to let Philly come back into it. But it didn't even matter if Philly came back into it. They lost again. Those Eagles did. They lost again by only two points. And last but not least, the Falcons finally got their first victory. Kirk Cousins has not looked great at all this season. You know, aside from the one victory the Vikings had. But the, but the Vikings just do not look very good right now. The Falcons, you know, they finally had their first win. They finally got something. That's that's good, right? But yeah, week six of the NFL season really taught us um, some interesting things, if we're going to be completely honest. I'm telling you. The NFC race is wide open. Don't don't discount, you know, three and three teams like Carolina. They are still in the mix. Teddy Bridgewater and company are still in the mix. Who's gonna come out of who's gonna come out of this conference, you know, unscathed? I mean, you got contenders all over the place. The entire NFC West is a contender. There's seven playoff spots. The, the NFC West could potentially take all of them if the if things aren't careful, I mean, you got you got the Cardinals running the air raid to perfection out there in Arizona. You got the Seahawks, despite the fact that Russell Wilson has no O line either. Another guy who doesn't have an O line, even though they're off this week. You got the Rams. You got the 49ers. Both, I mean, the 49ers have looked very injury prone, and the Rams have only played NFC East teams and have lost the other teams that they played. But, I mean, that entire division right there could be going to the playoffs. But don't 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 count out the Saints or the Panthers. Bucks lead the the South right now. Um, in the North, you got the Bears, strong defense, and I mean, yeah, sure, Rogers and company were exposed a little bit because they hadn't played the best competition in themselves. But but don't tell me that. Packers aren't a good team because they are a good team and whoever wins the NFC East at this point is just whoever wins the NFC East is going to get beaten bad uh, it, it's just awful out there I don't care who wins it at this point like Dallas still has the lead but it won't be a lead for long unless the Eagles and Giants tie on Thursday which I doubt is going to happen and then on the AFC side you know the Browns. The Browns. The Browns just need to fix the turnovers. Really, Baker's turnovers. To be completely honest, you know, this will be the Bills. Bills need to fix their defense. Chiefs are the Chiefs. Steelers just gotta stay. You know, on the course, play like you did against the Browns. Do not play down to your competition. Do not do that. Titans got to improve some things themselves. But as long as they have the ball and the ball control is there. You know, they're in good hand, and things will go well. Colts, um, just, again, same thing with the Browns. Same thing with Baker Mayfield. Got to clean up those Phillip Rivers turnovers. Got to play hella good defense, I'm telling you. Um, and the Chiefs are the Chiefs at this point, like, and the Ravens are the Ravens. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's looking very interesting, looking very fun. So, yeah. We know a lot of teams looking interesting through the first six weeks of the season, a lot who are not. So, come back here tomorrow at some time, and I'll tell you about Week 7, because Week seven's not looking the prettiest slate either. In fact, there should be a game that should be moved, but, you know, whatever. So, 
Big Boy Variety saying so long, and I'll see you all tomorrow.